on Facebook earlier. I was engaging in drug dealing behavior. I'm not going to lie. I was trying to find some fentanyl and I was trying to find meth, whatever I can. Wait, not hold on. I, I got I, I to gotta ask you about that. How, how, <laughs> how do you find meth on Facebook? Hello. Hey, can you hear me? Yeah. Who's this? Uh, this is... What's up? Just uh, struggling with sobriety, I guess. Struggling with sobriety? Yeah, yeah. Okay, how old are you? I am 27. Um, what, what sobriety, what kind of sobriety? Uh, well, it was originally, uh, a opioid, uh, kind of thing. And then, uh, it evolved to a, uh, meth. And I, I don't know if I can say that on stream. I'm very sorry if I can't. Um, you can say whatever you want. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, it was opioid originally, I think. Uh, it, and I kind of beat that and, uh, it turned into, uh, speed and I'm about a year sober from everything now. And I guess I'm just kind of mentally hitting rock bottom, you know, kind of engaging in drug seeking behavior. I lost my insurance and I don't have anybody to talk to. So here I am. And Do you, when you were getting clean off of, uh, the drugs did you have a counselor anybody who was helping you or was it just a, a sheer force of, of will? um well at first with the fend i definitely went through a program um uh and after the program i got a job that provided the insurance and i used the insurance from that to kind of continue to get counseling and stuff um but then i met some people I probably shouldn't have and I and I discovered speed uh and it you know I kind of used speed as a crutch saying I can get off that you know and I kind of had a weird relationship for like four years swapping between the two of those uh it's, it's been pretty pretty crappy okay yeah. well I'm gonna tell you this I don't know what you know about me or my show but um i'm you know, not I've seen, I've, I've seen some youtube videos and yeah you know you're not a, okay. like a super professional. i'm not a real therapist i'm a <laughs> no. i'm a i'm a i am a uh, a little i am a, a 14 year old boy yeah. in a gecko costume yeah no and, i'm not, I'm not I'm, um, if you I'm not, i and i was I'm, 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 if you if if you accept that and understand that we i'll i'm, I'm happy to talk to you about stuff yeah, definitely. I'm just here to talk, man. I, I, I don't, I don't know if I'm going to like relapse. I, like I said, I, I engaged in drug seeking behavior and then your notification popped up on my phone. So I was like, screw it. I'm going to give this dude a call. And I watched it here and there. So here I am. <laughs> okay. So, uh, how long, I mean, how long have you was, so you you're a year sober from everything. You're not on, you're not doing anything. No, nothing now. Like maybe the, you know, uh, weed here and there, but I don't really count that. I think that might help me more than anything, but yeah, about a year and some months now, probably a year and three months to be exact, as of July of last year. So, yeah. Um, when you were kicking your addiction, what was the most helpful thing for you? Um, honest, honestly, uh, it, it was uh, weird, but YouTube uh, and, and um, you know, uh, just uh gunpla i got into like gundam and stuff like that like weird stuff like that um and you know i found new things to focus myself on and you know so i was building little robots and it was pretty fun but that's kind of lost its luster now and uh like i said i i'm you know i'm a high school drop i didn't say this but i'm a high school dropout i'm currently getting my uh, education again so go me on that but i think that might be part of the reason why i'm kind of stressed out a lot lately so yeah you're starting you're starting to get your education again yeah 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 i oh, uh, found online yeah i found an online high school um and it, it's it was fifteen hundred dollars but um you know it, it's not a ged it's a high school diploma so i can actually learn some things that i needed that i didn't back in high school before i dropped out so it, it's been good it's, what's you your know, um I'm, what's your like uh uh I guess, I guess, ideal plan. Do you have a job that you want to try to do or, or a career you want to try to go into? 
I do actually, yeah. So, well, not like a career, but right now I have a plan. Um, so my my mom and my girlfriend they both work at a hospital, um, and it pays very well. And I have a, I pretty much have the job now. I just have to get this this diploma out of the way so I can actually, you know, so I can pass the screening, you know, because they require a diploma or a GED. So that, that's my plan right now, and I really want that because it'll give me the kind of money I can have to not do you know painting and yard work and you know the stressful shit i don't like you know like man you live done you live now you with your you with your parents no definitely not i i moved out when i was like 19 and so i've been on my own since then they, my mom does help me out a lot but i don't like living at home i like the freedom um so i'm, I'm living with roommates right now and at my last job, I saved up enough money to kind of, you know, it was a, for situations like this where I lose my job and need to figure things out, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, sorry. It's, 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 loaded. It's, it's a whole can of beans, man. <laughs> no, 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 no. Well, so in the past, uh, all right, how are you feeling? At the moment... Like shit, I want, I, like I said, I was on Facebook earlier trying to, I was doing, I was engaging in drug dealing behavior. I'm not going to lie. I was trying to find some fentanyl and I was trying to find meth, whatever I can. Um, but wait, not, hold I on. I, I gotta, I, I gotta ask you about that. How, how, <laughs> how do you find meth on Facebook? Like, are they just, is there just a dude on Facebook nah. place with like, nah, man, taking uh, pictures of meth and posting <laughs> No, nah. basically when you do shit like that, you kind of meet a lot of people down the line. Um, and they just kind of stick around on that friends list because you forget about them when you're done. Um, and I, you know, just remembered some of those people and hit them up and, you know, yeah. Oh, okay. I thought there was like some kind of like, it was a coded <laughs> like, thing where like, if somebody like, was like, like I'm Coke selling or something. <laughs> yeah. Like somebody like, like selling a, a Renaissance style, um, futon actually means, no. No, I, I think it's I, no. I think it's people I probably should have like deleted and blocked a long time ago. Honestly, um, I didn't, and I'm you know I, I probably will now that I'm actually on this weird. Uh, sorry to call your stream weird. It's not weird. It, it's actually no, it's boring. very no, it's very it's very <laughs> weird. What we're doing it's right bizarre, now that's the word. Yeah, is biz- it's bizarre. very bizarre. It's very bizarre. There's no need to hide from that idea. It's Tell me about man. um. I mean, unless unless if it's unhelpful for you, if it's unhelpful for you, mm-hmm. I don't want to do it. But like, uh, okay. tell, tell me a little bit about the universe of that whole thing. Who are these guys? How do you not like they're fucking? I'm not like the FBI. I don't need their names and addresses. But yeah, like, of course. Who, who are these guys? How do you know them? Were they so, friends of yours? I can kind of talk about how I even got into that kind of life. If you yeah. Want that. Uh, so basically I'm 27 now. Um, I was, uh, living with some roommates back in, I was about 24, 23. Um, and I, you know, I was, I I discovered opiates. That's a whole different story, but we'll start with the mess life right now. Um, uh, I, I, I was with some roommates and my, one of my roommates caught me snorting, you know, hydros off of the bathroom think um and they kicked me out obviously and funny enough these are my current roommates now they forgave me and i still i live with them to this day because they're some of my best friends and but before that yeah they kicked me out and i had nowhere to go i didn't have a you know a savings account at the time so i went to live with a different friend of mine who lived in kind of the shadier part of town and when i got there um uh, yeah, at first, you know, I, I kind of figured they were doing something because they had people over all the time and they were, you know, doing stuff in his room all the time, you know, and I kind of walked in on it one day and they were like, and, you know, I saw it, I, I, you know, I've seen Breaking Bad, I knew what the hell they were doing. <laughs> uh, and I was like, can I try it? And they, they, they literally said, you don't want any part of this or you don't want to do this. And I was like, yeah, I do. That was, you know, stupid. And therefore mm. that's how I got in. That's how I got into it, basically. Mm. How many years ago did you say that was? Uh, so I'm 27 now. Seven, three, four years ago, I'd say. 
This is rough, roughly. So in the year, uh, do you know, from, I don't know if you've talked to any doctors or therapists, but do you know if you did any, any like permanent damage to your body? Um, I, probably a little bit. Uh, I didn't smoke it. I was always a snorter for most things. Um, mm-hmm. but yeah, like I, the, like this last year when I kind of got off of everything, I have found it hard to find dopamine in things than yeah. I used to. Like, yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It, 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 it is getting better though. I will not lie. Like I don't, Good. I wasn't like, you know, and I will say this, I didn't do it like every single day all the time. I was more of like a, a weekend warrior or whatever. Like I would kind of. It was it was like a I guess the safe face, you know, because I didn't you know I didn't want to be like some of the people I met and saw. Um, so you say so, so you say it's getting better. In the past year, what if any? What's been giving you dopamine, even if it's a little bit? Uh, video games, uh, alcohol, um, TV shows. I guess uh, you know, just living life. And I, I have a I have a girlfriend now. Um, I yeah. been with her for a year and been with her for a year and almost three months now and it, it, she did help me out a lot and but i'm not gonna you know it wasn't just her like you know and she knows about my past and stuff um she's at work right now so and i also don't want to put all that on her either you know obviously because that's not her job to you know consistently take care of if i'm wanting to relapse and most of the time i kind of hide that but yeah, no, I, I don't have access to insurance right now. So, and I know I have some local stuff I can go to, and I did do that. Um, I went to a local clinic that is income based, and honestly, they 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 don't seem to care. I know that's kind of weird, but they they don't have the same kind of. I didn't receive the same kind of care I got when I had insurance, you know. Yeah. So, <clears throat> so yeah. Uh, how did you meet your girlfriend? I uh, met her at work, actually. I got a job at the mall, of all things, after when I was getting sober. And she was you my boss. a job at the mall? Yeah, she was my Doing boss. Doing what? Uh, it was just a, a pop culture retail store. <laughs> a pop culture retail store. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Kind of, like one of those, like, like, like you sell like, like box Pops lunch. and shit like that? Yeah, yeah. It was kind of like box lunch, yeah. Okay, cool. Did you do a lot of people still go to malls? Uh, this one in particular, not really. Um, we maybe made two grand a day. Um, but during the holidays, yes, like during Christmas time, yeah, we got a lot of people. Okay. But and um, all right, so things are going good with the with the girlfriend. Has she been helpful for you during this time? Certainly, she she's never judged me or threatened any weird stuff like every time i've ever mentioned it in the past she's always been very down for me and that's been an awesome experience because my ex um whole another can of beans uh she was actually pretty damn abusive towards me and to the point that where she got arrested for it which i, I know they don't get that often where you know it's, it's the you know the other like normally it's dudes beating girls but no nah, she hit me with her car and the neighbors called the cops on her and that was a whole can of beans. Um, and she, she weaponized my addiction too. Like any time we got into a bad argument, she would just like, yeah, she would, you know, just call me an addict or her words, uh, a junkie. Uh, and I hate, I hate being called that because I don't consider myself a junkie at all. I've, you know, yeah. Sorry, man. <laughs> this, is, this is new for me. I'm very sorry. What no? What? What? Why do you? Why do you? Why do you feel sorry right now? Uh, because I'm kind of just spilling some beans on people that uh that are in my past, and what if they stumble upon this someday? I don't want them to just like message me out of nowhere and be like, "Hey, did you talk shit about me?" Well, let's talk about this. Well, well, I kind of give my name. You... Too. I didn't think about that shit. <laughs> you give your name. We uh... can. We can. We can. We we can we can blur your name. We'll blur your name. Cool, um, cool. How do you? I mean, how do you feel talking about all this stuff to me and to and to people it, on the internet? Uh, I have adrenaline right now, so I might seem kind of weird. It's definitely giving me adrenaline, but it kind of feels good to kind of like talk to someone I don't know and just okay. 
Well, it's it interesting because I'm I, as you're talking to me, I'm I'm thinking about all this. I'm thinking about like uh, I'm enjoying talking to you too, and I I hope I am hoping that talking about this stuff is because I don't know. I'm thinking about like I'll read the chat later too, and I hope the chat's being supportive. Um, yeah, yeah I'm, well, read, I, I'm thinking about like I hope I hope I hope that um. You talking about this is 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 helpful for you. Yeah, yeah, I feel a lot better actually. Like I kind of came into this just I didn't think I would kind of like spill every bean I had, you know. And this is way more beans, but those are in the closet for now, I guess, in the pantry. <laughs> um, what is your dream? in in life what what what's your ideal future looking like uh honestly it's kind of simple um my dream at the moment is i would you know i live in a pretty dense city right now and i i don't like that you know i'm not a huge fan of living inside cities i like them i love them uh the other day i was uh, having lunch with my girlfriend um and i was like let's go to a park and i pulled up google maps and i just kind of noticed wow there's no green around here and i was you know, I was looking around for the green areas you can see on the maps, you know. Um, and I just, I think I want to live somewhere in the country, side somewhere. Um, and just kind of live a life away from society for the most part. And just kind of visit society when I, when I need. Um, I'd like to visit Japan too. That, that's on my list too. We were going to go. I was going to go, actually, I was going to go during COVID, but they, they shut it down. So I spent all my savings on drugs like a fool. So, Are you, are you anti, uh, are you, are you anti living around other people? Do you not like being in a place where there's a high volume of, of other folks? Yeah. Like, I guess you could say anti, like, it's not like something I like despise, but um, the other day I gave a buddy a ride to where he lives out, which is in the countryside, and it was a 45 minute drive out from where I live. And I stayed over there for the night, and I really enjoyed that. Like, just I saw some foxes, you know, on the way there. Like, just saw a deer. Like, I saw like just wildlife, and it felt cooler. Like, the nighttime felt a lot cooler than it does where I live. I know it's simple stuff, but I really did notice it. And I don't know. Yeah, I guess I do. Yeah, I think I would like to. I guess I am anti city right now. What like, do you feel like living out of the way would be helpful for this kind of drug seeking behavior that you're talking about? Probably, yeah, cuz I don't, you know. It's not like I'm out here just chatting up every neighbor I have, hey man, you do drugs? Like <laughs> I'm not I'm not doing that kind of thing, but yeah, I, it probably would because, you know, I can get into other things that aren't just stuck within my you know, the confines of my wall, you know, my walls. Mm. Mm. Yeah, but I've gotten into uh, anime and stuff recently, too, thanks to my girlfriend. So that's, that's been helpful. Um, you know, just got a Facebook message. I hope that's not somebody I know. I was about to say, I, you, I heard you get a <laughs> notification. That's not from one of those guys, is it? No, nope, it was not that. I'm gonna I'm gonna put it on my mute right now. Sorry about that. No but, worries, man. Yeah, no. I, thanks for this. I'm sorry if I have made this a very awkward uh, kind of uh, piece for you. It's, no, you haven't made this awkward at all. <laughs> I've, I, I am... I'm, I'm sure you had stranger. You know. Well, no. I, I'm thinking about. Um, I guess I'm. I'm take thinking your, about take like. Your time. Uh, I'm your I'm. I'm. I just I don't know I, I I'm hoping that it's help, helpful for you to. No, it, it definitely. I would rather yeah. you be talking to a gecko on the internet about all this than you know uh, uh, feverishly browsing the Facebook marketplace. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, and I'm, I'm not. Yeah, this my my entire attention is actually on this. And you know what? As I speak, I'm gonna I'm on the computer now. Actually, I'm talking to you through my Google Voice. Um, I'm going to just go ahead and block these fools and kind of like alleviate that from you. You know, I don't Good. want you to think like, you know. I'm, okay, hold on. I got to know this stuff. These guys, mm -hmm. like, 
do they do they post? Like, are they posting like drug dealer no. memes or <laughs> no, shit no. like that, where it's like SpongeBob no. with like a grill and he's got meth and stuff? <laughs> no, it's nothing like that. There's, honestly, it's going to be real. It's people that you would expect half the time. Um, I've noticed when I got into this, it's it's people that you really don't. It, it's nothing like. There's no stereotypes really. It's like the pe the guy I stayed with. You know, he's a hardworking guy. You know, works six hour shifts. And I mean six hour days. I'm sorry, I'm nervous talking about people. I don't want to mention any names on accident. Um, it's people that you know that are just everyday people. You know, like middle class, you know, lower class. Some even I've met a few higher class people. Um, but no, it's it's definitely the people you meet doing this stuff is not what you would expect, like out of the movies or anything. And there's not like rotting teeth. I think that might be a late stage thing for people who just kind of like let it all go. And I have seen, I have met people like that. And those people you can spot from a mile away. But most of the people I met around my age in their thirties and stuff, and sadly enough, even early twenties, they're just people, you know. And Dude, let me ask you this, and this might be a can of worms i don't know but um okay, man. Like, i'm not so, sensitive enough to where i'm gonna like you know like, yeah well I, mean, I, I i i'm curious about your perspective on this because um you know i just got back from australia and a lot of people there were talking to me about um you know various uh, uh, areas um mm -hmm. having having meth problems and then of course in in the states you know in in california there's there's a, a very big meth and, and fentanyl problem and um, again, I'm dumb as shit. I'm a 14 year old boy in a gecko costume, <laughs> but um, there's a lot of. I guess there's a lot of like, what the fuck? Are, and I, I'm I don't ever talk about like political things on here. Yeah, but course. I'm always okay. I, there. There is kind of a thing of like, what sh what what's the solution overall to help <sighs> cure this problem? And I'm curious if you have thoughts on that. As somebody who's who's been there, I will, I will say I do think that fentanyl is a huge problem right now. Um, and this is coming from a nobody who lives in the southern United States. Um, so, in just in the past two years, I have lost my stepfather to fentanyl, and I've lost one of my actually yeah one of my best friends two two years ago to that same thing, and I have. My best friend's wife passed away from it. I have lost, like, just not, you know, I've lost three people I know personally just in the past couple of years. And I have lost, and people I know have lost more in the connected kind of circle, you know? And it's always a different kind of scenario. For example, with my, my stepfather, he was a Marine uh, in, you know, in Afghanistan and Iraq back in the early 90s, uh, mid 90s, like, whatever that, that happened. 90s and early 2000s and when he got injured in war and he got on pain medication uh as a disabled veteran and um you know he he got hooked on pain meds and opioids and it, it it grew from there and you know he was actually one of the first actually the first person who noticed what was wrong with me when i was kind of avoidant and coming around occasionally he helped me a lot and it really sucks that he's gone honestly and I'm kind of pissed off at him sometimes that he even got on that. I don't really know the situation on how he got to that, but, you know, it's opioids, man. It's, it's a crisis. And as for how I got onto it, it was basically the same kind of road, uh, you know, just hydros and what, you know, it just kind of grows from there. And lately it's, you know, you always see fitting all people that will be drug dealers. They'll just kind of say, Hey man, I got this in. And it's, it's fentanyl. I don't, you know, nine times out of 10, they'll try to offer that to you. I've kind of, I, I do not mess with that anymore though. I will say I have, I'd like to say I've kicked that. I've even been in it. I've been in front of it a few times now after I've gotten sober and I refuse, you know, just based on the losses I've had over it. So, you know, and by the way, man, I'm, I'm sorry to hear about your, about your stepfather. No, yeah, um, I, I, therapy helped me with that one, man. He's in. I like to believe he's in a better place. I don't. I'm not a religious guy, but he's not suffering. 
you know. So again, but like you know, back 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 to the original question. Like, do you do you have thoughts on like what what the general s- solution could be to these problems? I think it might boil down to it. It might boil down to mental health right now. Like, and just I don't know, man. You know, I, I have thought about it, and not in the like kill your local bit and dealer kind of way. Just in like an actual like grand scheme of things. One of my best friends is actually on it right now, and you know I've already lost another best friend, and it's I don't know. Like it, I have talked to him. I've poured my heart out, and you know his, his the fam- people, his family, and people in his life has done the same thing. And, and it's not like they're ignoring that. It's not you know a lot of people are like, well, they don't care. Well, they do care, but it's just there is a sense of hopelessness going on with a lot of people who. Are, we're kind of poor right now. Um, you know, I, I don't know if that makes any sense, but there is a sense of hopelessness right now, hopelessness for a lot of people right now. And I really think that uh, there, there, there needs to be, in my case, I wish I could go and get help right now, but the help yeah. I can get right now is very cheaply, very cheap. It's very like, right. You're talking about that. You know, yeah, yeah, like, you were talking. You were talking about that. Yeah, yeah. It's like it's like getting a free trial, and then all right, all right. So they want to give me some medication. Okay, I can't afford that medication. I need to pay pay my gas, pay my rent. You know, and and I know, and then I look. I'm lucky because I do have a plan to get out of the situation I'm in. But I do know of a lot of people who don't have a way out of that. And you know, you get a drug charge. Who's going to really hire you? You know, you you get in a altercation or you know you spill something you know you people are going to see that so it kind of creates a bad situation and do you have any ideas i'm curious about you too honestly me because i'm I was... dude i i'm so like um <laughs> i have no i have no it's, I have, it's complex have, man yeah it, it's, it's, it's no it's, i have i'm not i don't want to like um here's i'm not if if you took one look at me You'd be like, I don't know if this, I don't know if this guy is the guy to solve the uh, uh, fentanyl crisis in America. Um, it's a bad one. Do you, I don't. I have no idea. I have no idea. It's a complicated issue. Um, mm-hmm. I agree. I'm not. I'm not even going to. I'm not even going to. I was. I was curious about your thoughts as, as somebody who's been there and is close to the situation. Um, well, I'm not even going to try to. I will uh, say this. Come up with an opinion on that. Yeah, that's fine. And I will say this. I, I, I do know this, like, just based on people I know and going with them to their treatments and stuff. Maybe it's a money thing. Maybe the people who are hired to treat these issues aren't paid enough because there is a... It, it, it might be a, a desensit, desensit, desensitized thing. Like, maybe... Sorry, I can't say it right. But some people might be desensitized to that ordeal you know like the people in in charge of treatment like the nurses or you know things like that they don't seem to care because obviously they they might expect to see that same person again i don't know it 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 probably depends by state too you know like what's your what's your name again give me you give me a fake one so i just Uh, call you something all right, let's go with uh, Ace. Ace. Yeah, I, like I got that. that. From one, I got that from One Piece, actually. I've been watching that one lately. Ace, uh, <laughs> thanks for I, – I just want to say thanks for talking to me about all this stuff. Um, yeah. I'll reiterate you know, again. I hope this conversation was, was helpful for you. Um, I hope it's helpful for the people listening to, like, have a, an idea of, of what dealing with a situation like this is like. Um, yeah, and- I, fa- I found the thing that you were talking about about how um, there is no stereotypical dealer. I thought that was very interesting. Um, yeah, there's not, or a user. And I'm I'm very I'm I'm uh, I'm proud of you. Happy that your your life seems to be on an upswing, going to school, I you got a nice that, girlfriend. Man. Are you, are you, I'll ask you this before we go and, and you can be honest with me. Are you optimistic about the direction that your life is going these days? I think 
I'm glancing at chat now and after this conversation. Yeah, I, I'm definitely feeling a little bit better, man. A lot better, actually. I, yeah, um, I kind of came into it just kind of like in the throes and I feel like I'm kind of like, just kind of, yeah, I feel a lot better, dude. I, I appreciate it. I meant, I meant like on a, I meant like on a macro, not even, I'm not even talking about this conversation. I'm just talking about in a, in a general macro sense. Mm-hmm. Are you, are you optimistic about where life is heading? Yeah, def- for me. Yeah. Um, you know, you've got the whole alien thing going on right now in America. So that's kind of exciting. So let's hope it's not a distraction, <laughs> but yeah, I, I am feeling a lot better, uh, on like compared to me last year or the year before, or especially three years before. I am on, I have, I'm very positive actually. Awesome. Um, ace, 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 go ahead and delete. I don't know. Go ahead and delete Facebook entirely. What the fuck do you need it for? Anyway, do you play? I can't think of a good reason to be on Facebook at all. You're right. It's, it's successful. You're, you're completely right. You know what? I, on this stream, I, I'm going to delete my Facebook actively. Okay, I really like give that. my, yeah, I'm doing it right now. Like, I'm, and they make it hard too. They like make you have to click a whole bunch of boxes and confirm your phone That's number weird. and all that shit. Yeah, delete any, Facebook. Any, Go look at trees. Got any tech support people? Because where do I even go? I'm in my settings now. I don't even know where to go. <laughs> uh, just type in delete in the handlebar, I guess. No, it's really cunty. They make it hard. They do. All right. I promise you, tonight, it's just, right after this call, it's going to happen. You know? I'll give you my word on that. I, I will not be findable. So if you look at the Facebook chat, you're not going to find me. It's going to be gone. Okay, we're... we're I mean, we'll, eight. We'll, oops. <laughs> we'll, okay, we'll, we'll uh, cut that out. We'll, thank we'll, you so much. We'll beep it out. <laughs> um, Ace, man, thank you again for talking to me about this. I'm glad to hear the life is going better. Is is there anything else that you want to say to... Yeah, about anything ever at all in uh, just, life ever before we go? Just, yeah, whoever is listening, um, just stay positive the best way you can. And if it takes reaching out to a gecko on the internet, uh, just do that. It's, it's better than the alternatives or whatever that, whatever's going on in terms of a case like mine. I'll go, I, I'm going to, I'm going to, um, I'll go ahead and say, I think you should talk to a real therapist about this. No, man. Before I, talking I was to funny. a gecko. But, you definitely um, talk to a real therapist and talk to a counselor. I was being funny, but yeah. Definitely, if you have resources or have people who can help you get resources, please do that because it will make a, a difference. And as sad, as sad as it is, I guess a little help better than no help, you know? Hey, thanks you for calling, Ace. You have a good one. You too, bud. It was interesting talking to Ace. Um, fuck, dude. I don't know. I'm not a... Um, this is not a podcast where I pretend to know how to fix and this is not a podcast where i pretend to know how to fix anyone's issues let alone a uh a giant systematic one but um it was cool talking to ace i don't i don't i don't um i don't know i like hearing a i like hearing about a good upward trajectory i like stories like that i like stories of people turning their lives around right because i've been i've been there before not with like you know hardcore drugs or anything like that but i think a lot i think a lot of people can relate to this idea of having been at one point or another in a time where your brain was just convinced that you were done and there was no perspective your brain was just like you're done your life is fucked up you're hopelessly that's what he was talking about he was talking about a lack of hope he mentioned that he said a lack of 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 hope Uh, i think there's i think that's the thing that a lot of people can can relate to and um you have enough of those over the course of your life you you realize that um your your brain just playing some tricks on you, and so I, I, I have a, I have a great amount of respect for people who can, who, who have lived lives where they've been at that point uh, several periods of time, um, 
and yet found a way to prevail past it and have good relationships and careers and, um, you know, uh, dopamine things. I should have asked him what games he was playing. Um, I wish I had something funny to say. I don't have anything funny to say. I'm always, I'm always in my, I'm like, after a heavy thing, I should say something funny. I don't always have something funny to say. Can we put a, um, like some cartoon Wiley Coyote noises over, over me saying this right now? Like a, like a, you know that? You don't actually, you don't actually have to do that. But if you're listening, if you don't, you don't have to actually do that. But if you're listening, just imagine that they were there. Thanks for calling, Ace. Call from Kelly. Hello. Hello. What's up, Kelly? How you doing? Um, I'm great. How are you? Uh, I'm okay. I'm feeling pretty good. Uh, I I've noticed. I've I've talked about this before, but I've noticed I feel a lot better when I'm uh present and that's 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 my um happiness barometer am i actually present in what i'm doing and um, am i actually talking to lyle yeah i feel very present right now i feel present oh my uh, okay. talking to you I'm so. so sorry no you don't you don't have any you've done nothing as far as i'm <laughs> concerned to apologize um, for what's uh what's up kelly i'm just um I am also present. I am here. I am, was actually getting ready for bed, and I saw you were streaming, and I was like, holy shit, you know, I might as well try to get in. Bang, bang. Have we ever spoken before? No, we haven't. Um, but I've been listening to you, um, to the podcast. I'm a mail carrier. So I'm walking all day by myself, you know, doing the devil's work, delivering bills and shit. So, and I just listen to you. How long have you been doing that for? Ten years. Ten years? God Yeah. Damn. All right, that's yeah. a long time. Yeah. It's, it is a long time. It doesn't, it doesn't feel that long, but, um, yeah, it's been a fucking minute, man. Tell us the ins and outs of the mail. Oh, my gosh. Um... You know what? I'm going to tell you something that happened to me today. So Please. I'm at, um, I'm at one of my boxes and I'm, I drive a mail truck or a mail van. Actually, it's like a really big, it's called a ProMaster. It has the, uh, United States Postal Service stickers and emblems all over it. I'm in a full uniform. This guy drives up to me and is like, you're a mail carrier? I said, huh? He said, do you deliver the mail? And I'm like, yes. And I kind of laughed. He was dead serious. I thought he was joking. And I get this shit all the time. He's like, well, I'm just, I'm trying to deliver this, whatever he's trying to deliver. And I'm like, yeah, I'm a mail carrier. Like I can take whatever outgoing mail you want. And he's like, okay, I just didn't know. I'm like, obviously, I'm delivering mail. Like, what do I look like? I'm just out here for fun. Hmm. So he wasn't sure that you, whether or not you were a mail carrier. Yeah, I guess not. I thought he was joking. Was he? How old was he? He was probably older, like sixties, seventies, maybe. Okay. You know, I you know this kind of reminds me of 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 a thing that I think about a lot, and I may I, I okay. don't know if this is a good this, I don't know if this is a good analogy, and you tell me if it's not. But um, <laughs> okay, okay, all right. Uh, sometimes I'll call a store, mm-hmm. and and they'll pick up, and I'll say, "Are you guys open?" <laughs> okay, you know you know where I'm getting at. And um, <laughs> yeah. I'll say, are you guys open? And they'll they'll respond like I'm the biggest fucking idiot they've ever met because, um, yeah, of course they're open. That's what they always say. They're like, they answered. yeah, because right, right, right. they answered. <laughs> but A, I'm just confirming. And B, it's like, what am I supposed to do? Just hang up immediately? 
Right. You know? No. That is very true. But like, So this guy, just, he just wanted to confirm that you were a male yeah, character. Yeah, it was just such like, a, and I even repeated it to him to see if like he understood how like kind of dumb he sounded asking me if I was a male person with, I had mail in my hand. I have a uniform on. I just walked out of my mail truck. And he was like, are you a mail carrier? And I thought, what? Okay, just, so tell me what's the um, what's the worst part of delivering mail? Uh, the worst part. Hmm. Well, I would have to I would have to say definitely doing it in the winter time. I'm in Ohio, so I have winter. I have snow. I can deal with the cold, the snow, not a fan of. I love the summer, I love the heat, uh, but snow, yeah, not a fan. And then obviously now, the dumb questions of if I have a mail carrier or not. Now, um, do you, do you, uh, is it true that you have to like run away from dogs and stuff? Um, <laughs> it is, that is very, very true. I've had to definitely spray some dogs um from time to time but it's also like sad to spray dogs because i love dogs oh, wait, you had and... to, you've had to spray them oh yeah because we carry dog spray what is dog spray i've never heard of that so it's kind of like pepper spray but it's for dogs i guess i'm not sure if there's much of a difference but we call it dog spray and it's like pepper wait, wait, spray. Wait. you you're you're <laughs> pepper spraying dogs so, like, if a dog, if there's, like, a loose dog and it's, like, approaching you, you know, aggressively, you know, barking, you know, foaming at the mouth, and you feel in danger, we have this spray that you're supposed to carry on you, um, and you can just spray them, and it's supposed to, you know, deter them from biting you and attacking you. How many, in your 10-year career, how many dogs have you pepper sprayed? Um, probably like only three that I can think of. Okay, that's you know that's pretty good. I mean, what has um, like what? Okay, how far does the situation have to escalate before you so feel like it's necessary? I can think to of one that comes comes to my mind is when I'm you know like uh when like a carrier you know you're walking through people's yards. Um, and there was, when I was on this one specific route, I had, uh, this dog actually happened to jump the fence and it was after I'd already passed its house, but it was coming right at me and I'd have, you know, it was barking and I just happened to turn around and I had enough time to actually get my spray out because it was actually biting my bag, my, my, you know, postal bag. And, um, so I had time to spray it and then it, you know, kind of whimpered away and went back to, you know, its house or yard or whatnot. Um, so yeah, that's just kind of what happens. I mean, it, it, it is effective. Do the owners get mad at you for spraying the dogs? <laughs> so I guess it's really like, depends on who it is doing the spraying so i so i actually the next day um went up to those people's house and knocked on their door and kind of let them know the situation um and was kind of like you know i'm sorry I, I had to spray your dog but this is what you know he did blah 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 and actually that particular time they tried blaming it on me and saying that i walked up to their dog which was i mean a blatant lie but you know, you just you just try to you know be be the best person you can and tell the truth. But sometimes people just don't like to hear the truth. They think okay, their dogs the, are all fine and dandy. What about the other two times? Um, so one of the other times was I was kind of in a more rougher neighborhood, and this was kind of like That's I guess what pun. I would call a rogue a rogue dog, and it had no owner. And it was just walking the streets kind of, you know, while as I was delivering mail. Um, and it just got too close to me. And I was actually fairly new at that time. That was kind of at the beginning of my postal career. 
And I just was really, really nervous, and it got too close, and it was barking, and it was a bigger dog. Um, and I just, you know, had to do what I had to do. Hmm. Now, okay, so you know how, like, um, like if you're, like, a police officer, you have to, like, get pepper sprayed? Yeah. Do you have to get pepper sprayed? Oh, my gosh, no. <laughs> that would be hilarious, though, because there's a lot of people that I would love to see that happen to. You like but people no, you work don't. with? Yeah. Why 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 yeah, are there people you work with that you want to see get pepper sprayed? <laughs> because I work with some um crazy people, idiot people. I don't know. It the postal service is wild. What is it that makes it. What is it that makes these people uh, uh crazy? Um I don't know. It's just like their personalities and their way of thinking. Maybe it's just because there's such a, uh, I mean, there is people that still are at the post office that are like 80 years old that haven't retired yet. And I'm 30. And then there's as young as 18 years old. So there's so many like age gaps. And it's so, such a crazy, so when you say- like, would you say that they, like, well, what what exactly, like, like, do you have any examples of things that people have said or done that you, you feel is, uh, makes you want to pepper spray them? Um, <clears throat> I can't think of, like, a specific situation, but it's just more of, like, a, uh, it's just, like, something that happens, like, day to day, like, it's just, like, a random you know, someone says something just completely idiotic, like the like the person I dealt with today asking me if I'm a mail carrier, just like that type I don't, of. I don't know if, I don't know if that guy. I don't know if I agree with you about that guy deserving to get pepper sprayed. I have to. I'll draw my personal line there. Um, I guess this just happened too many times to me, where I'm just like, really. Now, Kelly. Um, do you do you, you personally? Do you think you'll be in the uh, in the force for? I mean, this guy who's eighty, right? And he's been doing it probably since he was twenty. What do you right. do? You see yourself winding up like that, dude, or do you have something else you want? To do? Um, I can. I, I definitely can see myself uh, maybe holding out that long, but it's actually uh, kind of funny. I was literally just talking to my mom about. Um, getting into the dog grooming business. Oh, so you're you're trying to you're definitely trying to make up for a few sprayed dogs. <laughs> I kind of yeah, I guess so. Maybe yeah. I told you I feel bad when you spray a dog. You feel so bad. I mean, I'm a dog owner. I would never want my dog to be sprayed, but I do understand that you know there are times where it just happens. But but yeah. Well, Kelly, yeah, um, think about it like um, that, but now I am. <laughs> I'm trying to think of how many um, shampooed dogs equate to like a race. Like, okay, so if you sprayed three dogs, you probably have to shampoo at least 20. 20? To make up okay, for the yeah, sprayed. I'm going to say tw- I'm going to say 20 shampooed dogs is worth okay. three pepper sprayed dogs. And I don't, and I'm, that just came out with that on the fly. That's open to interpretation. I'm open to yeah. hearing alternative viewpoints on that, but that's just what I came up with. So I, I think, um, I think 20 is a good number, but can I include like, does my dog, is she included in that number? I'm going to go ahead and say no, unless if you pepper sprayed oh. her. No, I've never pepper sprayed my dog. I could never. Kelly, is there anything else you want to say to the people at the computer before we go? Um, I just want to say today might be a bad day, but tomorrow is a new one. So just look forward to tomorrow. Have a good night, Kelly. You also. Thank you. Here's the thing, though, and people always say that. People people say that a lot. They say today is maybe a bad day, but tomorrow is a new one. But here's the thing: tomorrow could all tomorrow could also be bad. Tomorrow could tomorrow tomorrow could be worse. Tomorrow could be worse. But then the day after that, 
could be even worse than tomorrow. Two days from now could be double as bad as today. But then the day after could be like a little bit better. And then the day after that, even worse than two days before that day. And then the day after that is um is Sunday. I, I, I lost track of days. Um, watch watch out for your dogs if they go near the male people. Call from Kylie. Hello. Hi, is this the therapy gecko? Yeah, who is this? This is Kylie. I was the Kylie. one who asked if you were going to come to Richmond earlier. Oh yeah, dude. I don't know. I don't know when, but I'm coming in September. September. That'll be awesome. You go to only Kylie. 21 and up clubs, don't you though? Uh yes. Yeah. Well, I um actually, I have, I have no idea. Guys, I think I wrong. think I th I want to I want to say I want to say yes. I want to say it's twenty one and up. Oh, okay. Well, then I'll see you in like three years. <laughs> um, how old are you? Uh, I'm eighteen. Okay. No, I um yeah. no, I, I I get you, man. When I was um fucking uh uh eighteen, nineteen, twenty, there were all kinds of shows I wanted to go to that I could not go to because I was a a little boy. Um mm -hmm. Well anyway, we're on the phone right now, Kylie. What's what's up with you? Is there anything in particular you wanted to talk about? Um, kind of. I wanted to talk to you about my uh, looming problem of giving myself too much to do and never feeling like I'm being productive enough. Okay, what are you, what are you giving yourself so much to do? Um, well, uh, I'm becoming a sophomore in college in a couple of weeks. <laughs> and I took on like four jobs on campus and I'm also a STEM major so I'm kind of freaking out because I have to go back to college in two weeks mm. and then I will lose all my social life after that well I really I mean I don't I don't have any advice for you when I was in college I was a film major and my roommate was a bi uh, some he was a biology major and so he hated me because um i had nothing to do ever because i was studying a not real thing and he had everything to do always because he was studying a real thing i i don't oh, I, I i have no i get well because when I, I when i was in college i i tried really hard to not have to do anything to I mean, avoid specifically the issue that you have. Yeah, no, I get that. See, my parents, they always warn me because my dad, he was like that. He went to college just kind of have fun. And then he always tells me, oh, you better be very serious in college. You better work hard and, and do all this stuff so you can not work hard when you're older. What? And, uh, I mean, what? So you're what do you, what STEM thing are you in? Uh. Something microbiology or chemistry. I'm still trying to figure it out. Oh my god, that sounds. That sounds. I. I that sounds awful. It's really. It's really bad. <laughs> you know what's a bummer is that sounds so awful, but I know that some someone has to do it. I don't know why. I couldn't explain why chemistry is important, but like I know it is obviously, right? I mean, yeah, it, it's it's very important. I, honestly, I don't know what I would do. I'm just trying to learn it right now, but I'd love to be involved with it. It's very cool. Do you have like a vision for the future of a thing you want to do? Um, I, I kind of wanted to go into water treatment analysis across the world, you know? Doing All right, stuff that sounds like important. That, that sounds important. Oh, yeah. Big time, big time. So what are these things that you're doing outside of uh, just the school that is giving oh you too my much God. stuff? So I'm not going to say the college that I go to, but it's a really small one here in Virginia. Um, and I became part of, you know, you ever like heard about the student assemblies that are at colleges and on campuses and stuff? 
like well, a stu I got involved student at the, events? Yeah. The, yeah, yeah. I got involved in one last year. And then I decided to do it again this year. So now I'm the vice president of that, which means I'm going to run all the events on campus, trying to get things going, have student engagement. And then I also became the, I started a club because I was bored. <laughs> um, it's, a, it's a journalism club where we, we write about the stuff going on. Um, so I got to lead that. And then I also, stupid me, decided to apply for this position uh, in the Board of Visitors of the campus, um, which I would be the student representative of that. And I have to work with the, the president of the college and then uh, the other college that works with us. And then I also became a residential assistant for the dormitories. So I have to work Dude, in there Dude, Jesus well. Christ. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a problem. <laughs> Well, uh, no. Well, okay. How, how, uh, out of all those, uh, out of all those things, do you do you have a genuine, actual desire? Which ones do you have a real, genuine passion and desire to do, versus like just doing them because you signed up? Um, I mean, the RA one, I really want to do because they give you free room and board, so I would get Got out it. of the house, which sounds really nice. Okay. Um, the Board of Visitors one's really nice because I get to meet a lot of the, the higher-ups of the colleges and meet some really cool, amazing people. I get to talk to representatives in Virginia and people on boards and committees. And Okay. Yeah. Those two are probably the most important. Okay, the journalism thing. Do you... Do you, are, were you is that something you were just doing because you were bored or something you actively still enjoy? Uh... I say I say I still enjoy it. Uh, another thing with it is I started working with the, the communications um, board leader guy, uh, this douchebag, <laughs> and he was uh, he told me he was gonna make me one of his interns, and if I just led the club, he would pay me like two hundred dollars a week just to lead the club and write the newsletter for him. So I'd say that's okay. pretty important to cook my food. And what was the first thing? Some uh, the student events okay. thing? Oh, yeah, yeah. The, the vice president of student assembly or whatever. I'm going to go ahead and say that because you forgot about that one, it's the least important to you. Yeah. All right. No, I kind of did that one out of spite. All right. I didn't want the other person to win. All right, so you could ditch that. Yeah. Yeah, no, for sure. All right. So, all right. So we're down one. Uh, Kylie, I'm actually really, I'm, I'm, I'm actually pretty fucking terrible with uh, advice, but I, I'm thinking about this as I'm talking to you. Um, all right. Ditch the one that you don't have a good explanation for. And then every single okay. one of the other ones, um, in the times in which you're stressing out, I would say... Remember the reasons that you just gave as to why you're in all of those things. And hopefully those reasons, if not dispelling your stress, will at least make it feel as though your stress is worth something. That's amazing. I like that. You know, I was, I was really worried. I've been worrying about it all summer, trying to figure out how I'm going to deal with all of it. Because, mm -hmm. you know... I, I've grown up and I've been taught that you you never work enough. So I've even though I'm doing all these things, I still feel like I'm not working as hard as I should be, and I'm trying to. Okay, but but when you say as hard, with, but the the, sh the word should, okay. See you. See mm -hmm. here's the thing. You I, I I'm I've lost track of all the things that you're doing, but you gave me <laughs> at least three at least three of them. I think you gave me like well thought out reasons as to why you're doing them that are more significant than I should. This vague nonsense thing that doesn't really make mm -hmm. that comes from nowhere and is nothing. That whole I should thing. So w next time you feel like you're stressed out or like you should be doing something, forget about the should and think about the actual reasons behind the things that you're doing. And let those guide your behavior instead of the should. Because it's good. It's good that we talked about this because you, you have actual reasons that you gave me. You mm -hmm. said that you can meet this person. 
you do this thing because you like this. This gives you free this so you can save money to do this. Those are all actual, tangible, good reasons. Then the, then the one that you thought about where it was like, no, the reason is for spite. That's a terrible reason. You get rid of that one. And then mm. and then these, these actual... You have actual things to guide you further. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does make sense. Thank you. Good. Good. I'm glad that made Giving sense because... A lot of the times, <laughs> I don't really know what I'm doing. Why am I doing this? No, no, okay, now okay, this I now is my turn. You're helping out people. Don't worry about it. I hope so. I, I'm. Why do I do this? I don't know, man. I get to I sell T-shirts you, sometimes. You, That's you have fun. gone out and met so many people. That's something I've always wanted to do: is to meet tons of people and learn tons of things, but have the guts to do it. You'll get to, I think you'll get to do that. Well, actually, I don't know, because you're studying a real, you're going into, like, chemistry. Mm-hmm. I don't know, I don't, I don't know anything about that. I don't know if you can meet people doing chemistry. Well, you can do a lot of things with that. You know, and there are some microbiologists that work with the delegates and people in the house and do all types of work with them, so science is everywhere. And then climate change, you know. My chemistry professor, she's, she's an active study in that and teaches a course on it. That could be important. I've said this on the podcast like 10 times, but I always feel like with climate change, you know, I, I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm ready. <laughs> no, I feel the exact same way. Oh my God. You know, you know, it's a natural process, the way the world works, by the way. Fires are, are completely normal. The world goes through cycles. And, you know, we're just an organism. Human race, we're, we're just an organism. Plain and simple. And if we're not benefiting the Earth, the Earth is going to get rid of us. And that's fine. Because we're not doing a good job. I'll say that much. Well, I'm going to make sure to uh, smoke a ton of weed and eat a lot of mcdonald's before uh we're all dead kylie yeah, is there anything else sure. you want to say to the people at the computer before we go no i think I, I think i said too much already good luck kylie uh uh god bless you and jesus christ too. You too bye dude good night bye